Hi, I'm Rick Dior. And this morning, I'm going to talk about matched grip with you. Over these past two or three years, I've gotten a lot of questions and emails about playing the match grip. And a lot of you have asked me that because on most of my videos, I play traditional grip. So a quick story here. Uh, when I was a kid, most all drummers up north, which is, uh, you know, New York, New Jersey area where I grew up, uh, learned the traditional grip. It was considered, uh, you know, in the 1960s and 70s, the grip that you learned first when you were, were a kid. So that's the grip that I learned, and I played it for maybe five years before I even touched a drum set. And I worked on all the rudimental things, you know, like some of the things that I post here, the Nard, the Wilcoxon, the Pratt, all those classic snare drum books. And I worked on them all, traditional grip. So I went through all that, and then when I got into high school, I started playing timpani and the mallet instruments, and then all of a sudden, I was introduced to the match grip as far as those instruments go. So I had to actually start working on that because as you know, you don't play timpani and marimba uh, or xylophone and all that traditional grip. And if you do, you probably shouldn't. So uh, when I was learning that, it was very difficult to get started on that left hand. And the main trouble was learning to use my fingers like I had done with traditional grip. But I spent a lot of time on it, hours and hours every day. And I got quite good at it, to the point where I started playing a lot of the uh, rock gigs I was playing. At the time, I was playing in several uh, you know, rock bands that covered all kinds of uh, tunes, you know, Led Zeppelin and all that stuff back in those days. I started playing a lot of match grip. And then still, most of my jazz gigs, I would play traditional, because it just felt better because I'd grown up doing that. But now, over 40 years later, uh, I don't really have a particular favorite grip. So to me, a great drummer can play both grips because they both have their advantages and disadvantages. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. But I just want to make clear there is no better grip. Match grip is great. In fact, I beg you to learn it because you're going to need it. And traditional grip is great as well for lots of things too, especially playing brushes and playing really, really quietly because there's something about the traditional grip with the weak hand that this particular grip takes advantage of. And we'll talk about that in a little while. But first, the match grip and the way that I play it and I teach it. So if you've watched my technique videos, as I know a lot of you have, and I have a lot of them, <laughs> if you go to that playlist, you'll see that when I grip the stick, in other words, my fulcrum, I'm gripping with these two fingers here. So the first finger and the thumb. And the thumb is on the side. So we'll show you this view with the, um, with the camera here. And this is my left hand. And then you want to look down and see a space there. If you're closed up like this, in my opinion, that's wrong. And I'll tell you why. Because if you're closed up like that, then you can't use your fingers to the full extent that they should be used. If you're closed up, there's really nowhere for that stick to go. But if you open, you've got all that space there, okay? And you can get a lot more power out of that stick and out of your fingers if they have more space to move. So that's the first thing. The second thing is the orientation of your hand to the stick to the drum. So I've seen a lot of folks, and certainly some of my students when they first come to me, they play with this kind of grip, which is like a French grip. It's a timpani French grip, really, is what it is. I call it the squirrel grip because, you know, when a squirrel eats a nut, they pick it up and eat it like that. I try to get my students not to do that because, in my opinion, that's a weak grip. Also, it will not necessarily move up and down in a straight line. When you do this and you use your fingers, it's going to want to move like that. Unless you do extensive training as a timpanist, 
Now, most of you have not done that, but when you do that, you work on using that grip and getting the stick to go straight. But it's very, very difficult and it does not come naturally. So you have to spend years doing that. So I recommend playing straight down. And not like this. All right, so that's the first thing that I teach. It's really important. I feel like you'll get a lot more strength with these over uh, these muscles that are on the forearm on top. It's not much here, okay, but there's a lot here. You can feel it if you, if you try it right now. The other thing you need to pay attention to is the balance point on the stick, where you're holding your stick. Every stick is different. These particular sticks are the ones that I warm up with. These are really heavy leopard wood sticks that I make. They're about 75 grams. And every morning I come in here and I warm up for like an hour uh, to start my day very early in the morning. It's about 6 a.m. here now. And I enjoy it. It's almost like meditation. And I'll warm up with traditional and match grip with a heavy stick. And I'll just do simple things, just like kind of a light wrist stroke, then a light finger stroke. So when I'm doing that light finger stroke, I'm isolating. I'm not moving my wrist, or I'm trying not to. Now that's my left hand, and then I'll spend twice as much time on my left hand because I'm a righty, and here's my right hand. It's okay for the wrist to move a little bit when you're warming up until you have the isolation going. And also keep in mind when you're using a heavier stick, that wrist is going to want to move at first quite a lot because of the weight. So these are training sticks. I don't play gigs with them. All right. Uh, but they're great for warming up and building strength. So then I'll practice my double stroke rolls both ways. And I'll do that for about five minutes. All different lengths, I'll do short ones. And then long ones. And I'll concentrate on evenness. And I'll even try to play really quietly. Leading with both the right and left hands. And that's important because a lot of the work I do with orchestras and whatnot is very, very quiet. Sometimes I barely play above, you know, one inch on the head. I'll also practice four-stroke roughs quite a bit. Again, both grips. Okay, so these are the things that I do that I'm going to be using during the day if I have a rehearsal or a concert or whatever. It doesn't have that much to do at this point with drum set. And then once I'm done warming up, I will play heavier. So I might do some basic stickings like paradiddles. To get my hands moving. So that's my warm up, but I just want you to know I warm up two ways, and you should too, match grip and traditional. I also believe that if you play both grips, it makes your hand, your weak hand, so much stronger. I know that when I started playing match grip in high school, all of a sudden I noticed my traditional grip was unbelievably stronger uh, after about six or seven months. I'm not sure why. I'm sure uh, a doctor could tell you, you know, or someone who specializes in sports medicine or something, but I think it's because I was building up more and different muscles than I had used before. So that's another benefit to learning both grips. Now, like I said before, you want to make sure you're going straight up and down and not in a circle and not sideways and not doing the squirrel grip. The next thing you want to concentrate on is not moving your shoulders when you play like this. I have a phenomenal amount of students over the years that have come to me at first with that kind of technique. 
after playing for years. Now that's instinct. Okay, so in other words, we're tool users, all right? So when we, we pick up a tool, we want to hit something with it. So we can either eat it or build something. So that comes with instinct and we want to use our heavy muscles. So when you pick up a stick, especially a heavy stick like this, the tendency is to want to, you know, hammer it. But I implore you not to do that. You want to do, just use your wrist and your fingers and really relax your shoulders. Now, I've said this a lot before in a lot of my videos on technique, but the one thing I always uh, tell my students to do is to do a reset. So in other words, put your arms at your sides and your head down and just take a really deep breath. And then exhale, let all the breath go out of your body and try to get that feeling of almost sleeping, standing up or sitting like I'm doing here. And then bring your sticks up and plop them on the head. And when you do that, that's the feeling you want to have all the time. Okay, so that's a really relaxed kind of playing where you're not coming from your upper body, your neck, your back. There's a lot of benefits to this, one being you're going to sound really good, the drum's going to sound really good, and you're going to end up playing at a high level for a really long time. I'm approaching 60 years old here, and I've never felt better as far as my hands go. My whole body, eh, not so much, you know, but my hands, no problem at all. In fact, uh, like I said, when I play, it, I've never felt better my hands because I, I warm up a lot and I practice a lot. And I think that my body right at this point after playing for over 50 years is pretty much resistant to any kind of damage uh, a drumstick might cause. That being said, I can pretty much guarantee you that if you play like this your whole life or stiff, by the time you're my age, you're going to have some major problems pretty much guaranteed. And I know that because I teach a lot of older folks my age and even older who do have some hand problems and shoulder problems from playing. Okay. And that shouldn't be the case. So you want to always try to really relax your whole body, your upper body and use your fingers and your wrists, but in a relaxed motion and not this or not this where you're doing the dreaded full stroke and using a tight wrist. That again was very dangerous for getting carpal tunnel or tendonitis or things like that. That motion, that's a repetitive kind of thing. You want the stick to do the work. Let the stick do the work. The last thing I want to talk about is closed rolls, buzz rolls. So when you practice that match grip, you're going to want to buzz. Now when you do that, especially with the match grip in your weak hand, you want to press with your all your fingers. So, But you don't take your fingers off the stick like that. So don't do that. They stay under there. Two teams, remember from my other videos, A team, B team. They both have different jobs. The A team holds the stick, the B team moves the stick. But you use all your fingers when you do that buzz. You don't hold your fingers out like this. I see that all the time. You want to be able to keep them in there so you can keep doing those buzzes. And the same thing with traditional, although it's, the mechanics are a little different. But this video is about match. All right, so that, that closed roll, I get so many um, questions on it. Now, I'm going to start doing some more videos about um, match grip technique, because it seems like most of you play it, which is great. But I also think you should try the traditional grip, especially uh, if you're going to play brushes. And I'm going to try to grab these here without knocking everything over. So the benefit of playing brushes traditional, 
Uh, well, there's many, but first of all, your left hand can do sweeps like this much easier than doing that, which has got to be the most awkward thing ever. So, So you, there's a lot of advantages there to whipping that weak hand. You can do it matched, but I've tried for many, many years because a lot of my students, I have to actually teach them traditional to play brushes, which is tedious, all right, because most of them are match grip players uh, when they first get to me. So it's the one thing that I, that I have a strong opinion about as far as this goes, that it does work better uh, as far as traditional. All right, but again, if, if you're so inclined, certainly you can do it matched, but there are definite advantages with the way the brush moves with these fingers as far as traditional. So I hope this answers some of your questions. And once again, I do play match grip quite often. I have to because I play a ton of timpani and a ton of mallet instruments, and I just enjoy doing it. And sometimes when I play a lot of traditional, you know, five or six hours, my fingers hurt but just because of the, the amount of snap that goes after five or six hours. So it's great to be able to just switch to, to match grip and you're not using the same fingers as far as grip goes. And that takes away a lot of that pressure and then I can go right back and not overdo it because I do play at least eight or nine hours every single day of the week, whether it's teaching or performing or practicing. So thanks, and we'll see you soon.